I just gotta order my six inch meatball marinara and get out of here. No sweat. Hey, uh, welcome to Subway. How may I help you? Yeah, can I get a six inch? I mean, a six. Oh, f. Well, Montaigne, I keep screwing up out there in the world. I think I just care way too much about what others think of me. Not to worry, Philosophy Tunes. Why don't we both go to the magical world of solitude? Wait, isn't it paradoxical to go with you to solitude? Uh, never mind that. Here, grab onto this magical dragon scale, which will transport us to the world of solitude. Sounds kind of sketchy, but uh, screw it. Hello and welcome to Philosophy Tunes, and in this video, we're going to be going over the essay On Solitude by Michel de Montaigne. Now wait, 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 don't click off this video. You might be thinking, what? Solitude? Being alone? I don't know if that's for me. Or maybe you're like, oh yeah, I love alone time. Therefore, I don't need to watch the rest of this video. But when Montaigne is talking about solitude, he is not just talking about physical solitude. He means something much more specific. In fact, there is almost an entire way of life being suggested here, so stay tuned. I'm going to be using the M.A. Screech translation coming from this selections book here. I'll put an affiliate link below if you want to read along. Now to start things off with this essay, Montaigne establishes an end goal that I think we could all appreciate to some extent. Now the end I think is always the same. How to live in leisure at our ease. How does this end goal sound to you? There's certainly an argument to be made for struggle and hardships. But let's be honest, we usually make these arguments during times of leisure. And there's obviously an appeal to leisure. I mean, we all get pretty excited for Friday night because it's the end of the school week and a weekend of leisure is ahead of you. So assuming a life of leisure is an end goal you respect, how do we get there? Well, judging by the title of the essay, you might think the answer is to just escape society and live off the grid. Maybe we should follow in the footsteps of Thoreau in this regard. However, Montaigne wants to be a bit more specific when it comes to solitude. For starters, he doesn't think that just running away from society is going to be enough. By ridding ourselves of court and marketplace, we do not rid ourselves of the principal torment of our life. Ambition, covetousness, irresolution, fear, and desires do not abandon us just because we have changed our landscape. Alright, so we can't just physically escape society. But then what? If you do not first lighten yourself and your soul of the weight of your burdens, moving about will only increase their pressure on you, as a ship's cargo is less troublesome when lashed in place. We have to withdraw from such attributes of the mob as are within us. So let's say you do the whole Thoreau thing, but are still prideful. You're still gonna be prideful, but just prideful by yourself. This might even be a worse situation because pride can no longer find an outlet in the opinions of others. When you're alone, your pride can't feed off anything. So Montaigne is saying, first we have to get rid of pride and these other attributes of the mob, as he calls it. But there's a concern here. How can we determine when we're in this spiritual solitude, so to speak? How do we know when we've eliminated these attributes of the mob? Now since we are undertaking to live without companions by ourselves, let us make our happiness depend on ourselves. Let us loose ourselves from the bonds which tie us to others. Let us gain power over ourselves to live really and truly alone, and of doing so in contentment. To me this sounds like a self-reliance on our own happiness. A lot of people get their happiness from other people, and let's not lie to ourselves and pretend we don't as well. Friends are good and healthy. I don't think anyone denies that. But what about a person who relies on other people for their happiness? Is that different than just having friends? I think of it this way. In the world of dating, you've got to have a life. You've got to have your own thing going on to be interesting to the other person. Your existence shouldn't solely exist around this other person, but rather, the other person is a significant add-on to your already revolving life. So bringing this back to Montaigne, by being content with our own life and not relying on other people to fuel our happiness, our happiness is more secure because it's reliant upon us. That's how I read it anyway. But for Montaigne, this detachment from the outside goes a bit farther. He lists a couple of historical examples of people who have achieved this level of detachment. When the city of Nola was sacked by the barbarians, the local bishop Paulinus lost everything and was thrown into prison. Yet this was his prayer. Keep me, O Lord, from feeling this loss. Thou knowest that the barbarians have so far touched nothing of mine. So even when you're thrown in prison and you've lost everything, you should still be able to retain your happiness because it is solely reliant upon yourself, according to Montaigne. But maybe this is too much of an ask. 
I mean, another example Montaigne gives is of a guy who lost his wife and kids, and yet is unbothered. I mean, let's be real, not only does that sound unachievable, but it also sounds a bit robotic, a bit inhumane. That's not the only problem. In order to achieve a physical solitude, we gotta have some cash on us. Montaigne was pretty wealthy from what I understand. He had a whole estate, and I don't even really know what that is, but it sounds rich. For the rest of us though, we gotta go out into society to sustain ourselves. But wait, wait, before you discard what Montaigne is saying for being unrealistic, let's see if we could still find some practical value out of this for today. I think I got something. For better or for worse, social media is becoming more and more prevalent in our lives. Heck, I'm even trying to make a career out of these YouTube videos, which are on a social media site. And now they're bringing out that Facebook meta thing, which I don't even fully understand, but it sounds kind of creepy. Now with this prevalence of social media comes the prevalence of social media currency. And by currency, I don't mean some bullshit like those Reddit coins. I'm talking about upvotes, likes, shares, retweets, that kind of currency. Some people stake some or all of their happiness on these social media currencies. Maybe it's a lack of likes or a lack of engagement, or maybe Twitter is just being a cesspool of toxicity again. It's a terrible place. Twitter's an awful place. Regardless, maybe instead of a physical solitude, which requires wealth, or a hyper-detached emotional solitude, which sounds difficult, maybe we could start with a more digital solitude. Give it a shot, try and supplement the happiness you got from social media with something more sturdy, something that you could do yourself. I want to end on a Montaigne quote that I think sums up this essay beautifully. We have lived quite enough for others. Let us live at least this tail end of life for ourselves. Let us bring our thoughts and reflections back to ourselves and to our own well-being. This is a big essay, so we didn't cover everything, but I hope you guys got some value out of it. Not to sound hypocritical, but hitting the like button, subscribe button, and bell will definitely help out the channel. Comment screw Twitter below, and I'll respond with a hell yeah. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you.